So the problem most believers have is that they think that God is sitting down in his throne and listening to their requests one after the other. And then when they make a request, God will say, um, yes. And then when they make another request, God will say, um, no. And when they, when they make another request, God will say, um, wait. God is too... <laughs> God is too advanced for that. It's just like thinking that Mark Zuckerberg would be in his office thinking before he approves any post you make on Facebook. No, it had already been coded. It had already been programmed in the software, in the application to behave in a certain way. And so in the kingdom of God, principles are God's automation. What would life be like if you went into prayer knowing that you would always get a yes? What would life be like if you had the full confidence and the full backing of heaven in every prayer you make? And you know for a fact that when you go into prayer, you will not get a no, you will not get a wait, but you will get a yes. Well, in today's conversation, I'm going to be debunking a very huge misconception among many believers about how God responds to prayers. Many people believe that the reason why they don't have answers to their prayers is because God is fond of saying yes, no, or wait. And so when they don't get answers to their prayers, they say, oh, maybe this time God is saying no. Or some other time say, oh, maybe this time God is saying wait. But if you study scripture closely, you discover that that is a false assumption. And this has formed the bedrock of many believers' faith. And that is why you find out that many believers around the world have a paralysis of their faith. Because their faith is founded on false premises. Their faith is founded on false premises instead of their faith to be founded on true promises. And I'm going to explain the difference between basing your faith and making your request based on false premises or based on true promises. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 3 verse 27, Withhold not that which is good from him to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. Right? So in Proverbs 3 verse 27, it is clear that it is not in God's nature to withhold something from you when you are deserving of it or when it is in his power to do it when you are due for that thing and so god will not tell you to wait if you make your request in alignment with the principles that he has set in motion for example let's say you have one million dollars in your bank account and you have an atm to that account so you can withdraw that money anytime you feel like but that ATM has a PIN code or a passcode that you need to impute in order to validate your identity and to get the money that you want out to make a request for money over the machine. That means that if you go to the ATM and you insert your ATM card and you put in the right code that you have previously set, you'll be able to get the money that you want, right? In the same vein, if you go to the ATM and you put in the wrong code, even if you have a million dollars in that account, that ATM will not disburse money to you. Now, when that happens, what do you say? Do you say, oh, the bank manager said no? Or would you say, oh, the bank manager said wait? No. The monies have already been deposited in your account, ready to be accessed by you. And there are principles guiding how you can make withdrawals from that ATM. And so if you flout those principles or if you ignore those principles or if you work against those principles or if you fail to apply those principles correctly, the principles will work against you because that machine has been programmed to function according to a set of rules or according to a set of principles. And so in much the same way, everything that you want to receive from God in the place of prayer has already been coded in the realm of the spirit. It has already been programmed behind certain rules and principles that I like to call if-else statements. So, in programming, we call these if-else statements rules that must be fulfilled before a particular line of code will be executed. And so, in the if-else statement, if a condition is true, it will allow the program to run you know a particular line of code 
and and so if if that's not true if the condition is not fulfilled it will get into the else block and then it will execute whatever is here and let's say take no action is what is here and so this is how God has programmed prayers to be and so the angels of God are ministering spirits and all they do is they hearken to the voice of the word of the Lord that means they are watching to see if this condition is fulfilled in your prayers and once this condition is fulfilled in your prayers they are immediately activated to bring the results to you that's why in the book of Daniel the angel that brought answers to Daniel said as soon as your request came up to heaven as soon as a request was made I was sent I was sent to bring you the answers but the prince of Persia withstood me now the case of you know spiritual warfare and the prince of Persia withstanding the angel that was bringing the answers is a different conversation entirely and that's beyond the scope of what I'm talking about but the point I'm trying to bring is that the answer was already released immediately Daniel made the request why because Daniel was already fulfilling the condition or precondition in the if statement and because the rule was obeyed because the principle was applied correctly Daniel got the angels to bring his answers to him speedily so the problem most believers have is that they think that God is sitting down in his throne and listening to their requests one after the other and then when they make a request God will say um yes and then when they make another request God will say um no and when they, when they make another request God will say um wait God is too <laughs> God is too advanced for that it's just like thinking that Mark Zuckerberg will be in his office thinking before he approves any post you make on Facebook. No, it had already been coded. It had already been programmed in the software, in the application to behave in a certain way. And so in the kingdom of God, principles are God's automation. And I got that quote from Myron Golden. Myron Golden is famed for always saying this, that principles are God's automation, right? God's automation and so when you apply principle correctly you get the results regardless of your skin color regardless of your 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 age regardless of your background and so having established that it brings me to the book of first Corinthians 1 verse 20 in first Corinthians 1 or rather second Corinthians 1 verse 20 so in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, if you read it from verse 18 to verse 20, you're going to see something really profound, and I'm going to read it to you here. In 2 Corinthians 1, let's read it from verse 17, actually. Now, from verse 17 of 2 Corinthians 1, it says, When I therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness or the things that I propose? Do I propose according to the flesh, that with me there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay? Take note of that, because we are talking about how God responds. And I'm telling you that God does not say yes, no, wait. And that is exactly what Paul is addressing here. In verse 18, Paul says, But as God is true, our word towards you was not yea and nay. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. Wow, that is, that is interesting. Okay, let's go to verse 20. And so it says, For all the promises of God, in him are yea, and in him are amen, unto the glory of God. So, Paul is trying to tell us that all the promises of God in him are here, in Christ Jesus are ye, and in Christ Jesus are amen. So if you're asking for anything that fulfills this condition of being a part of the promises of God in Christ Jesus, you'd always get a yes. So this is how to always get a yes in prayer. But what most believers do is that they ask for things based on their own premises, right? Now, what is the meaning of the word premises? A premise is something that you suppose is true. It's something you suppose is true based on your own assumption or based on false beliefs or false teachings. 
And so you suppose that it is true. And so because of that supposition or assumption, you develop an idea based on it. You develop a belief based on it. You develop a doctrine based on it. And this is where many believers are. So they are approaching God based on their own premises instead of approaching God based on God's own promises. And so this is this is how it works. If look at this if statement here. If your request in prayer is in alignment with the promises of God, it will be answered and you will get your response. However, if it is not in alignment with the promises of God, but it's rather in alignment with the promises of man, it will get into the else and you will not get any answer. And so you will be in that loop waiting and waiting and waiting for years trying to get results without knowing why you're not getting results. And on the flip side, if you believe that God is saying yes, no, and wait, when it looks like you're not getting answers to the prayers that you're making, instead of activating spiritual warfare and taking by force what belongs to you, you think maybe God said no, or maybe God said wait, right? Because you don't know that this thing is your right, is something you are entitled to by birth, by the new birth. And so you, you allow the devil to have a few day instead of taking the kingdom by force, instead of taking what is yours by en- enforcing the spiritual laws of spiritual warfare. Now, having established that, that brings me to another concept. Let's see what Jesus said about how God responds. Let's see what Jesus said about how God responds to our prayers. Now, in the book of Matthew 7, verse 7, Jesus Christ made a very bold statement. He said, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and it shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. There was no assumption. Jesus Christ did not make any room for assumption. And he made it clear that it was the desire of God to grant us our petition in the place of prayers. And so if you go into prayers thinking that God could say yes, God could say no, God could say wait, without knowing for a fact, without knowing for certain that according to God's promise, it is already a yes and it is already an amen. Without knowing that this thing has been given unto you, the world has been given unto you for a possession. And so you're going into prayer is just to take possession of what is already yours, you will go into prayer with a paralysis of faith. And when the devil brings in a delay in your answers, you will give up, you will give in, and you will take your foot off the pedal. But when you know for a fact that all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yes and amen, even when it looks like the answer is not forthcoming, you will keep your foot on the gas pedal, and you will take the battle to the enemy's camp, and you will take forcefully what is rightfully yours in the place of prayer, in the place of your confession, in the place of your faith and believing and your confidence. So this is really very important because many believers have been misled because they don't they don't study the scripture for themselves. And so they've been misled to imagine God to be the way they think he is, to function the way they think man functions. And so they think that just the way their dad tells them, yes, no, wait. So that's how God says, yes, no, wait. They don't understand the principles to be applied to always get a sure yes whenever you go into your place of prayer. But with what I'm sharing with you today, congratulations, because you're now going to go into prayers knowing that as long as what you're asking for is in consistency and in alignment with the principles that God has set in motion based on his promises given in his word in Christ Jesus, your answer is a yes. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ emphasized the fact that this is a yes when he said in the book of John 15 verse 7. And so in John 15 verse 7, Jesus Christ said something really profound. And he said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you he says you would ask what you want you would ask what you want now this is a very profound scripture king james says what you will but it means the same thing he said you ask what you want and it shall be done unto you now 
I'm going to take a step back and explain something really, really powerful here. Right? The word done comes from a Greek word, ginomai. And ginomai means to be brought into existence. So in other words, what Jesus was saying is that when you abide in me and my words abide in you, even if what you're asking for has not been done before, it will be brought into existence for you. And that was what happened to Abraham. When God made a promise to Abraham, he had never made that same promise to anyone before Abraham. But because Abraham had a very solid relationship with God, it was brought into existence for him. Right? When God took Noah, the Bible says, um, Noah walked with God and he was not because God took him. He was translated to the heavens. God had never done that before Noah. But because of Noah's solid relationship with God, because Noah always kept himself abiding in God's presence and enveloped in God's presence, it was brought into existence. That operation, that result, that response was brought into existence for Noah. Right? So, another thing I want to show you is the word words. The word words here comes from a Greek word, rhema, right? And rhema is the spoken word of God. It's a specific word for a specific person, for a specific situation in a specific time. And that's the spoken word of God in essence. Rhema is the spoken word of God, right? So, if you allow the rhema of God to abide in you and you abide in God's word, you would ask what you want because what you want will be what God wants because God's word has enveloped you and when that happens whatever you ask will be brought into existence for you even if it does not exist wow that is powerful and so that further debunks the idea that God says yes no wait right many people do not understand how God operates in the new dispensation and so they still think of God the way he operated in the Old Testament and because of that they are paralyzed and they are weak in faith but with what I've just said in the past few minutes if you take it into action and do a further research you find that this is in alignment with biblical truth this may not agree with what you've heard popular preachers say this may not agree with what you've known all your life but there's only one thing I ask of you I want you to go back to scripture take what I've said go back to scripture investigate it based on the word of God and come up with your own conclusions and come back to the comment section and report to me what you found. I believe that you've been blessed by this conversation and I want to congratulate you because from now henceforth you will always go into your prayer time knowing that you get a yes, knowing that God does not say yes, no wait, because all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yes and amen. Congratulations once again. I want you to bask in the presence of God knowing that you would always get a yes as long as you abide in him and you allow his word abide in you. I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.